Hi, Brian with the Tempe Public Library. And today I'm back in the library to share another iPhone and iPad tip with you. Now, as we continue to prepare to reopen to the public, I came down to the youth library because today's iPhone and iPad tips are for parents. My first tip is on using screen time, which is found in your settings just above the general section. Screen time gives you insights on how your device is being used. It also allows you to set some limits and restrictions on the type of content or the amount of time your device is being used by your child. Once you've had screen time turned on for a while, you can tap on see all activity. This will show you the daily average of time you spend on your device. You can also see which apps you use the most, how many times you pick up your device an hour, and how many notifications you get. If you think your child spent too much time on a particular app, just tap on it, scroll to the bottom, and set a limit. You can choose how many hours a day they can use that app, or you can give them extra time on the weekend if you're feeling generous. You can also use screen time to set up downtime which is time during the day where the phone has restrictions on what apps can be used. This is great at restricting access to social media and games during school hours, while still giving your child the ability to call home or get directions using maps. Screen time also allows you to set content and privacy restrictions. Tap content restrictions to choose the best content settings for music, movies, books, apps, and more. The next tip I want to talk about is using guided access, which is found in your settings under accessibility, then scroll all the way to the bottom and choose guided access. Turn it on and you're set to go. Now when I start a game for my three-year-old, I can triple click the side button to bring up the guided access options. Tap options in the bottom left corner to deactivate some of the device controls like the top button, the volume buttons, the keyboards, touch, and more. You can even circle areas of the screen to disable touch input. I'll deactivate the top right corner so my daughter doesn't accidentally close the game. Once I press start, that part of the screen won't be active along with any other gesture that might take them to the home screen or activate control center. Triple click the side button and enter your PIN number to end guided access and return to normal use. One of the classes we teach here at the library is our App Store 101 class, where we walk you through the App Store and how to search and look for great apps and download them onto your device. In the class, we also share apps that we use that we think might be helpful for you. And today, I wanted to share two apps that as a parent, I think are worth checking out. The first app I want to share is Sego Mini School. From the app page, you can see its rating, read a description, and get a preview through photos and videos. You can also read reviews from other users, and although this is free to download and try, you can see that to continue using, you'll need to pay a subscription fee. My daughter really enjoys a variety of fun and silly games that encourages learning. There are a lot of apps that are completely free as well, so don't feel like you have to pay money to get a great app. The next app I want to share is completely free, the PBS Kids Game app. My daughter loves playing games with the characters she recognizes, like Daniel Tiger, Cat in the Hat, and the Sesame Street characters. I hope you found those tips helpful, and we hoping to be open real soon, but until then, have a great day.